All right, good afternoon and greetings from South Georgia, USA. We are in the shade of the oak trees here about 6.30 in the afternoon. It is over 90 degrees today. No rain today, cloudy sky, practically no wind. I don't even know what day it is. It's the 11th, Wednesday, Thursday. Boy, time passes. Now, I've been talking about the golf swing as being an unconscious act of the mind or a conscious act every way you want to look at it. But basically is that when we start manipulating our body, whatever that be, you'll see golf videos, cock your wrist here, parallel here, this on the way down, 60% on the front foot, turn the hips through, all of that kind of stuff. We are not capable of those are swing thoughts. We just aren't made like that. And what it ends up doing is, there's a saying for it, par paralysis by analysis. And that's a good saying. Our job here is to use this tool that is designed to hit a golf ball we take it in our hand with the toe pointed upward. That's roughly how it's meant to be used. We put it down behind the ball. And we determine we're going to hit the ball that way. And we give it a go. I would think that there were thousands, if not hundreds of thousands or millions of impulses that went through the brain the ocular system, binocular system, we got two eyes, we triangulate that. The eyes are a marvelous biological creation of God. Impulses go back and forth out to the muscles, it, it just, you, there's no telling how much goes into it. And to try to break that down and say you need to do this and do that. Let's put it this way. People manage to hit the golf ball in spite of being told to do that. Many golfers, great golfers, have been told or have said that they hit better when they were young until before somebody tried to coach them. Bobby Clampett's one of them. He was a genius at golf. Got up there, wore them out at first. And then, I guess well-meaning people in the PGA started trying to help him. And he says they ruined him. He still played good golf, way better than any of us could. But not at the level. I'm going to hit this golf ball because it's just begging to be hit. And I'll tell you, what is going on in my mind, which I cannot control, and I'm just having to let the words come out. But I'm going to do that. I'm just going to pull this thing back. I'm going to let my eyeballs look at that thing. I'm going to let it look at the target that I'm trying to hit. I'm going to put this thing down there, and I'm going to look at my target one more time and I'm gonna hit the ball and it went within about two percent of the place that I wanted it to land very close and remember this is not a laser it is not a rifle it is not a laser guided missile This is a club. I'm going to hit it again. Same thing. I hit a little deep right there. I still got a good shot. Well, I'm not perfect. 
but I'm going to try to hit it again more clean. And that was a beautiful shot. Now the thought that I was having Somebody I saw, a preacher on YouTube, was saying that faith without works is dead faith. There are others that say that we are saved by faith and not by works. But there's this idea that we must have works. Fruits, they call it, the fruits of the Spirit. And they're listed, patience, love, long-suffering, and that sort of thing. But are those fruits produced by the tree, or do those fruits produce themselves? The analogy of the fruit is what the Bible uses. It seems to me that if you purposefully try to do or produce good works, that it's you trying to manipulate good works much like trying to manipulate the golf swing. So that if you do something, let's say you give some money to the poor, or whatever your so-called good work is, is that work a genuine fruit of the Spirit, or is it a manipulation as if you were cocking your wrist, we're going to do this, we're going to give money to the poor, we're going to go to church every, uh, you know, at least once a, a month or once a week, we're going to finish like this, which would be like, uh, you know, uh, reading the Bible every day, making you do that, those are, you're making yourself do that, you are doing that, you're tree is not producing that on its own. All right, I got a <laughs> I got a story that just came to me. I'm going to we're going to click off and I'm going to tell you the story that it reminded me of. All right, this is the story that just came to mind. We are being attacked by gnats and other flying things right now, but we have some good bug spray. My grandfather, who was born in 1901, a very wonderful man, I loved him very much, and he loved his family, very successful businessman, and a very, I won't say a godly man, but I will say that he was a, an honest man. He believed in uh, not doing bad things. He had a pool, uh, a clubhouse we called it, and he had a pool that he built himself. This is back in the 50s when he built it. Very nice, and it was fed from an underground spring, and he had a pump in there, and this is a spring that bubbled up all the time, and he would pump it into the pool, and then he had an outlet on the other side, and it would run over into the pond next to it, and this pool stayed crystal clear because it was constantly changing this fresh spring water. It was, it was wonderful. And he had a clubhouse patio out there, and it was just a small, it had a bathroom and um, a refrigerator. He had a, uh, a beer tap that you could put a keg of beer in. And the guests would, they drank beer back in those days, and they would have this, and. 
he would have get-togethers with his buddies and all, but he also had, he planted a banana tree next to his clubhouse. And the banana tree grew, and this, in this neck of the woods, the banana tree will grow very well. Get, get big, 8, 10, 15 feet tall. And sometimes it will make little bananas, but the cold weather will kill them. They won't make it. So, he had a group of men coming over, probably to play cards or something like that. So he went to the Piggly Wiggly store and bought a couple of bunches of really nice looking bananas. Bananas that were still on the stalk. And he got out there in the banana tree and he taped the bananas up in that tree about eyeball high with some kind of uh, cellophane tape so that you couldn't see that they were taped on there. And then when his friends came, he showed them, he said, look at the, this banana tree that made these beautiful bananas and nobody caught on. They all came out there and were very amazed that because nobody thought bananas would grow in this climate. And it reminded me, that banana tree didn't make that fruit. My granddad made the fruit, or bought it at the Piggly Wiggly store, and taped it on there. So I'm kind of saying that good works are like that. Are you trying to make yourself do good works? And if you do make yourself do it, is it really good? Because, as the Bible says, we're not good. Therefore, my logic tells me, since we're not good, we can't do any good work. I don't guess there's any point in trying, then, if you can't do it. However, it did occur to me, but we might refrain from doing bad work. We certainly can do bad work. We can steal something, we can lie, we can, there's just a myriad of things we can do, and we know they're wrong. But we can refrain from doing those things. Is that a good work? Well, that's not a work at all, because refraining from doing something would be a not work. So refraining from doing something couldn't be a good work, because it's not a work at all. There's been nothing done. These are the thoughts that have been going through my mind this afternoon. I do not have a conclusion. But I know I'll have to just tell you the best I can remember what Henry David Thoreau said about do-gooders. Those would be people that purposefully go around trying to do good. And I'm having to paraphrase it. I don't have the quote right in front of me. But basically he said... That if he knew that a man was coming to his house to do him some good, he would run out the back door and flee from him. So he was kind of saying the same thing. Refraining. You know, the law says do not commit these different sins. So that's refraining from doing it. Does that make you good? I don't guess it does, because the Bible also says there's none good but God. So refraining from doing bad things does not make you good. One more. And I'm going to refrain from trying to create lag. I'm going to refrain from trying to turn in the barrel. All of the different catchwords. I'm going to refrain from doing those works. And I'm going to hit the ball. That's all I'm telling my body. Hit the ball in that direction. That's probably enough, enough trouble in itself. Oh, what a beautiful shot. All right, get right back to you. So 
So this YouTube preacher was saying, I took him to be saying that my faith in believing in Jesus was not enough. I had to be producing some good work. Well, it says, the Bible says that Abraham was imputed righteousness because he believed God. Sorry about the gunshots there. Somebody is back there shooting their, I don't know what it is, a rifle or a pistol. Didn't say anything about Abraham's good work. He was saved or reckoned to be righteous because he believed the promises of God. The Bible also teaches that we are to do unto others as we would have them do unto us. That would imply that if we see somebody in need and we can help them, that we should try to help them and they would do the same to us. But does it mean that I'm going to go downtown here and seek out people and try to help them? Well, I guess I could have a ministry doing that. But I bet if I see somebody that needs help, I'll stop and help them. And won't go the other way. As the story of the Good Samaritan. The man was in the ditch, beaten up, and needed help. And many of the people that came by looked at him in the ditch and went to the other side of the road and didn't stop to help him. But finally a Samaritan, a foreigner, came by, helped him up, carried him to the nearest inn, paid the innkeeper to take care of him until he came back from his visit wherever he was going and he would pay him whatever was necessary. You hear those shots? You know what that was? That was money. Burning money right there. Maybe the guy's got plenty of money, but I guess that was a $20 burning burning a $20 bill. That's just me. I know some people love to shoot. Okay, hitting another one. I'm not going to try to go and look and do all kinds of things with that. I, I mess up when I do that. I'll tell you one you really mess up on is when you try to do chip shots. You know, they'll tell you you need to do this, you need to do that. The chip shot, that's the worst, hardest shot in golf. It's the closest shot and it, it, you mess up. One more time. We're out in the country here. People shoot like that from time to time. There's a gun range too around here somewhere. That might be where that is. Chip shot? It's the same thing. I'm gonna hit that ball. 10 yards. I'm gonna look where I want it to go.
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. How about that? I got news for you. That was probably luck, but it did work out. And I will leave you with this thought. We are not good. Only God is good. Refraining from doing a bad thing can't be good because we're not good. Maybe it's like it's our duty. One more. I'm going to try to hit this one 20 yards. Let's see what happens. Seven, eight, nine, ten. I hit it nineteen yards. If I'd been hitting at the flag, I probably could have gotten it in. I'd only had three more feet to go. Now there's a little glitch in the microphone phone system, a little ticking. Probably going to hear that. We have ordered a wireless microphone system. I spent the entire day researching that. And it will be here in a few days. I bought a cheap one at Walmart. But it was actually worse. It was only $17. Well, you know you get what you pay for. You get what you put into something, usually. The one that I got was called a... You remember, Debbie? Not at all. The speaker, though, is only the size of a quarter. It goes here. I can't think of the name of it right now. But I'll show it to you in a few days. And I believe I will be able to up my video game. If you're still watching this, you probably don't have a lot to do. But that's okay. I'm glad. Let's remember our job here on earth is to praise God. And refrain from doing things that we know are wrong. I won't say be good, because we can't be good, because we're not good. There's only one that's good. Refrain. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. That's a promise from the Bible. All right. That's, that's what I got to say about it today. This is... Cardinal Israel, signing off.